That, that is an obvious picture of what Christ has done for us. He is the Lamb of God. His blood has been shed for us. When we come into his house, that is, into his salvation, his blood covers the doors and the windows and the angel of death, so to speak, passes over us. So Passover speaks of the death of Christ, the death of Christ. The next feast we observe is the feast of first fruits, and we find that in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 9 and on. And it says this, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel and say to them, When you come into the land that I give you and reap its harvest, you shall bring the sheaf of the first fruits of your harvest to the priest, and so on. Now, the first fruits, the Bible calls the resurrection the first fruits. It says Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection. So the resurrection is the fulfillment of this feast of first fruits. Christ was the first fruits of the resurrection. It says that in several places in the New Testament. Nonetheless, 1 Corinthians 15. The next festival that we notice is in verse 15, and it's what we call the Feast of Pentecost. Or it, you, it may be in your Bible with a heading, the Feast of Weeks. So you shall count seven full weeks from the day after the Sabbath, from the day you brought the sheaf, uh, the sheaf of the wave offering. You shall count 50 days, that's where we get the word penty, to the day after the seventh Sabbath. Then you shall present a grain offering of new grain to the Lord. You shall bring them from your dwelling places, two loaves of bread to be waved, made of two tenths of an ephah. You shall, uh, they shall be a fine flour and they shall be baked with leaven, which is interesting, as first fruits to the Lord. And, and on it goes. And it gives the, 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 uh, what was prescribed for the Feast of Pentecost, which, by the way, required the greatest sacrifice. If you go through these, you'll notice that it, the greatest sacrifice was required in Pentecost. That's just an interesting thought. Now, of course, Pentecost coincided as the, the priest would be required to take two loaves of bread, two of these loaves of bread that are normally baked without leaven. Normally they're just flat, unrisen bread, like kind of like pizza, I suppose, you know, just that flat sort of thing, baked without yeast. And on this feast, he would have to take those two, this time baked with heaven, so they're, so they're thicker. And he would have to wave them and, and eclipse them. Wave them and eclipse them before the Lord. And it's a picture of two becoming one. And it's a picture of leaven, which represented, in the Old Testament, represented sin and corruption and Gentiles. It was, it was a picture of God taking people who were not Jewish, not Hebrew, and putting them into his people. And the two become one on the day of Pentecost when the Holy Spirit was poured out. And we know that on the day of Pentecost, Acts chapter 2, the Holy Spirit was poured out and God had a new people, the church. The church was birthed on the day of Pentecost. And so as we, as we go through these feasts, we, we see that the next one, is the Feast of Trumpets in verse 23. And it says this, And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, In the seventh month, on the first day of the month, you shall observe a day of solemn rest, a memorial proclaimed with blast of trumpets, a holy convocation. You shall, do, uh, you shall not do any ordinary work, and you shall present a food offering to the Lord. So that's the Feast of Trumpets. Now, trumpets are for proclaiming something. And so we know after the day of Pentecost that the, the, the church proclaimed the gospel. And I want to suggest to you that in many respects, we are living in that era of gospel proclamation. And, and, and the gospel is being proclaimed. And we find these pictures... In the book of Revelation, if you want to understand the book of Revelation, you've got to understand these. Because Revelation uses these word pictures to make its point, to get across its message. Now, the next one 
is in verse 26, and it's the Day of Atonement. The Day of Atonement, or as Hebrews call it, Jews call it, Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, where two goats would be brought into the tabernacle precinct and they'd be presented at the altar to the high priest who would then presumably pick up two straws, one left, one right. Whoever got the short straw was the goat that would be killed while the other goat was held. That goat that was killed, you know, the arteries would burst and the blood would spray over the other goat. And if I was that goat, I'd be pretty scared at this point. So that when they let go of the horns and they held the, the, the curtain open of, the, of the, uh, the doorway into that precinct, that goat fled. It escaped into the wilderness. And that's where the expression scapegoat comes from, where, where it escaped into the wilderness. And it's a picture of us coming with Christ to the altar or the judgment throne of God, having our sins condemn us and yet Christ stepping forward to take our penalty for us. And we then, like that goat that escaped, are free. We're free to go. Now, that's a, that's a time of judgment. And it followed immediately after the Feast of Trumpets. And I want to... I want to suggest to you that God's judgment began when he brought the old covenant to an end. But I want to explore that with you in just a moment. The next feast is the Feast of Tabernacles, or your Bible might call it the Feast of Booths. And we find this in Leviticus chapter 23 and verse 33 and on. And the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, Speak to the people of Israel, saying, On the fifteenth day of this seventh month, and for seven days, it's the Feast of Booths to the Lord. And so on. And they had to live in these these tents for, for seven days. And apparently in Jerusalem, about this time, each year, you see people on their high rise balconies set up palm branches and make these tents on their balconies as a symbolic way of remembering. The, the Feast of, of Tabernacles, the Feast of Booths. And tabernacles, a 